Janet's going to take her stand right now. Talk about. I'll see if I can do it. Oh, brute force. She got it. Brute force. I'm like, I'll just big strong. You see what I don't know. Hi. Maybe <laughs> says you have leverage. Yes, that would be me, leverage. And you talk about stress points, and I see more boats coming in, and hello. And and I've been doing that with the literary magazines. I'm like, I've got so much, and I've got to do it monthly versus bi-monthly next year, and people are wanting to submit chapbooks to me that would become books. I'm like, that's it. I'm just saying, we're not doing chapbooks right now. At the end, and if I'm going to be doing online things, there are just going to be links to the writings instead of making web pages. I'm like, I'm doing too much stuff. I've got to figure out a way to be able to spread it all out so it works. Hi. I hope everyone is doing well. I am going to read to you from this book that's called Reveal, which is why there's a stethoscope on it, because you want to know what's deep down inside of you, I suppose. This was a collection book that was done of 17 years worth of stuff, and this is longer pieces. I am going to, and because we might have the time for it, when it became Christmas time of a number of years ago, I wrote a really, really long love poem for my husband. I read it once to him at Christmas time, and I read it once on a boat later, and I'm going to share it with you now. And there are derivations of this poem that have been used for things since then, and I will share them with you. And he's not even here to appreciate them, Aww. because he's still parking a car and walking over. But oh. he, he's on his way, and so he'll hear it. Um, this long first one is called 7 and 7 plus 18. The reason why it's called that, it was a 7 years, 7 months, and 18 days since the day we married. And so all of these love poems start with that, you know, like 11, 2 plus 14, where we sing and where we've been, you know. So they, they're they all based on the day that we've gotten married, and that's what those numbers are for. But So this is a long one for you to start. I know I'm supposed to be the creative one, but I started my schooling in computer science engineering. If I ever wrote anything, it wasn't creative. It, it was what makes sense, it, which is what I feel. I say I'm a writer, I say I'm an artist, but I haven't known what to say to you. And if I wrote something, it would be too straightforward. But if I want, but I want to do this for you. I, I want you to understand that all I can think is that if I were a painter, I'd be Michelangelo and paint my love for you like it was a Sistine Chapel, our hands touching in the sky like it was our last supper. If I were a painter, I'd probably go do, I'd probably, I'd probably give you something that would be cherished, that may deteriorate with each passing century, but as time wore on, the oil paint would peel away and it would show more layers of my love for you. Okay. What am I saying, paying like Michelangelo? I'd probably paint like Jackson Pollock and throw splashes of paint on canvas and call dripping lines of splattered paint art. Maybe I'm not an artist, but when I met you, I asked you questions. I wanted to learn about you. I wanted to soak you in. So maybe I'm not a writer. Maybe I'm not an artist. Maybe I'm an observer, like an astronomer, looking out into the universe, uh, trying to understand what makes everything, everything. What makes my tie to you so complete, so concrete, like my father, my grandfather's construction business, like my brother's desire to design buildings? You wondered why I love tall buildings, reaching up toward the sky. Maybe my tie is so much more concrete than art. I travel around the world learning different histories, different cultures. I fly in airplanes, I jump from airplanes, I pilot airplanes getting closer to the stars. And when I'm on the ground, I admire tall buildings reaching up towards infinity. So maybe I'm meant to be an astronomer. <laughs> studying something colder than ice far away. Pluto, 
is an errant ball of ice. I don't know. I always thought it was a planet. But then they told me, no, it's not. It's just a ball of ice from the Kuiper Belt. <laughs> the Kuiper Belt. Isn't it ironic? They say it wasn't what I wanted, but I wanted to learn, and it is still a part of me. We went outside at night in fair hope to see the intricate quilt of stars in the sky and lying on the grass, the stars over us, blanketing us, smothering me in my love for you. I rested my head on your shoulder and fell asleep while you, with you under the stars. Molecule by molecule, we originate from stars, and the stars were our blanket as a deer came walking feet away from us, not afraid. And now I know that we are all linked, our bodies formed from stardust. But outer space is a violent place. Violent explosions create the stars. Our Earth has earthquakes, avalanches, volcanoes, tsunamis, typhoons. And in all of this madness, somehow I found you. I'm not a writer. I'm not a journalist. I'm an observer. And I came to you asking questions and somehow broke your hardened shell. Yes, in all this madness, somehow I found you. I survived the thunder, the lightning, the blizzards, the hurricanes, the tornadoes. I've lived through the drought. I've survived it all. I've even been dealt a near-fatal blow from humanity. And it's as if the gods are paying me back for everything by giving me you. And with you, I've walked along the tops of glaciers, touching, crouching down from the violent winds, looking down in the beginnings of time. With you, I've watched solar storms and the geomagnetic operations of the aurora borealis from near the Arctic Circle. And what has man done that you can see from outer space? Well, I believe I held your hand while we walked along the Great Wall of China. As I said before, I'm only an observer, but now I can't imagine seeing the world without you. And with these observations, I be wed, because I'll never let you go. I heard a country song about a man who died and was watching his love from above. And I thought that if one of us left this earth, would they watch from above and wait till we were together again? Once our spirits found each other, I wonder if our spirits would hold hands the way we always do when we're together, making sure we don't let each other go. I've seen galaxies collide. I've seen comets smash into planets. I've seen supernova and the depth of stars and all of that. I still found you. As I said, I'm only an observer, but I found what I've been looking for. So I'll tighten my grip on your hand because I never want to let you go. And that was the just as the love of my life came in yeah. for the end of the poem. Yeah. Is it okay if I do two short ones? There some, that was a long one. Is that okay? okay. Just, you know, just, they're similarly themed. Because this one says observations nine and six. The nine and six relate to <laughs> when we were married. This is observations nine and six. I know, thank you, John. I know I'm supposed to be the creative one, but I started my schooling in computer science engineering, and if I ever write anything, it's not creative. It's what makes sense, which is what I feel. I fly in airplanes, I jump from airplanes, I pilot airplanes trying to get closer to the stars. And as I said, maybe I'm not a writer. Maybe I'm an observer, an astronomer, looking out past the Kuiper belt, trying to understand what makes everything, everything. 
I have walked on the tops of glaciers, crouching down from the violent winds, looking down at the beginnings of time. I have watched solar storms from the geomagnetic aberrations of the aurora borealis from near the Arctic Circle. I may have even bought some potato vodka in Russia or been there to hold your hand walking on the Great Wall of China. Molecule by molecule, we originate from stars, but, but, but outer space is a violent place, and we are all linked. We feel the good and the bad. We see meteor showers while galaxies collide, watch comet trails in the night sky as comets smash into planets. We witness the death of stars. We learn from both the living and the dead because yes, we are all linked and we are all observers and I don't want to let you go. Well, that was the three. The first one was long, thank you. 11 and two plus eight. Maybe I'm an observer, like an astronomer, looking out in the universe, trying to understand what makes everything, everything. Maybe I'm meant to be an astronomer, studying things colder than ice, far away. You know, Pluto is an errant ball of ice. I, I don't know, it was taught it was a planet, but then they tell me, no, it's not. It's just a ball of ice from the Kuiper Belt. But molecule by molecule, we originate from stars. And now I know that we're all linked, our bodies formed by stardust. But outer space is a violent place. Violent explosions create the stars. Our Earth has earthquakes, avalanches, volcanoes, tsunamis, typhoons, and in all of this madness, somehow I found you. I've survived the thunder and the lightning, the blizzards and the hurricanes and the tornadoes. I've lived the drought. I've survived it all. I've even been dealt a near fatal blow from humanity. And with you, I have walked in the tops of glaciers, crouching down from those violent winds, looking down at the beginnings of time. With you, I have watched solar storms from the geomagnetic aberrations of the aurora borealis from near the Arctic Circle. We've even looked at Venus through our telescopes as I've watched you photograph Orion in the night sky. So, with these observations, I be wed because after all my searching throughout the universe, I found what I've been looking for.